Go ahead and take a comfortable seat. Allow your eyes to close. Take a nice deep inhale here. And side up. Take another inhale. And let it go. And one more inhale. And let it go. Just allow yourself to be in the room, on your mat, and in your body. Start to take in the surroundings. Start to scan over the body. And then start to check in with the mind. So allow yourself to become more present with every passing moment. intention of being present in your body. Allow that daydreaming to happen occasionally, but then gently give that thought to that story, a little loving kindness, and then bring yourself back to the present. Maybe it's the tip of your nose, maybe it's to the rise and fall of your belly, maybe it's to the sensations that are going to occur in the body during this first part of yin practice. Inhale here. And let it go. Let those eyes blink open. And allow yourself to transition into child's pose. Taking those knees to the floor, bring your feet together, and then lengthen the chest out in front. And the hands can be in different positions. You can use a bolster under your chest if it's uncomfortable to lay all the way onto the ground, but then just start to drop those hips back toward your heels. If it's too uncomfortable for the knees, you can always place something under your hips. And just start to lengthen out, maybe resting your head on a block or a bolster if it feels good to keep your spine long and just really targeting those hips and knees and ankles. And just start to lengthen out. We'll be here for about five minutes. So take that first minute here to get out any wiggles, find your edge, whatever you're finding. The point to where you have a little discomfort, but not pain. You feel the sensations in the hips, the knees, the ankles, but there's no bad sensation. There's no tingling, there's no sharp pain. And then you start to settle into stillness. And then you start to settle in for that time. And it's noticeable with a lot of yin poses, especially the first four or five we're going to do. They're all going to be very forward folding. So it allows you to just drop in a little bit deeper. And sometimes this can be uncomfortable. So allowing yourself to compress, it feels a little too tight in the front body. But see if you can sit with that uncomfortableness. That's part of the practice of knowing that you're in an uncomfortable situation. Allowing yourself to sit with it. And knowing you can come out of it at any time. Notice if you can use your breath 
and direct that breath to any areas that feel blocked or tight where the tension is a little extra. Maybe just a few directed breaths to that area allows you to become more comfortable there and allows you to scan for the next part of discomfort in your body. halfway through the pose. If you ever feel discomfort in the shoulders because their arms are extended forward, you can always bring the hands back behind you. Knowing that might put a little bit more pressure on the neck if your head's on the floor, so just be mindful of that. Taking a full inhale here and let it go. Slowly start to transition yourself up onto your hands and knees. Just pausing there for a moment, maybe tuck the toes under, maybe do a little cat cow. Just take some time to acknowledge that pose. Sometimes it feels good to stretch out one leg after that deep compression in the hip. Take a couple breaths there. And going to the other side. And then from here, we're going to transition into our next pose, and it is called um, the toe ankle stretch. So it's part of having your feet be healthy. So a lot of um, Chinese medicine talks about um, if your feet are healthy, you're going to be healthy. So this really targets that. And if it gets to be too uncomfortable, I'm going to give you a couple options that you can do. 
Um, I'll show you the options. Um, if the one that we're doing isn't comfortable, I'll show you that one first. So we'll try that one first. So go ahead and sit on the floor. Take the soles of your feet together. So this first one's going to target the soles of the feet and the toes. So from here, you're going to wrap your hands around your toes, grab the balls of your feet, and then draw those toes away from one another. So you're really drawing the toes apart. So your balls of your feet are pressing in, you're pulling the toes apart, and you're just kind of stressing the feet. So you're kind of really working through that um, arch of your foot. Now imagine this has weight bearing on it. So it's kind of like when we do sitting on our heels. Um, we do this in yoga sometimes. And if this, you're not really feeling too much with this, well, the next round we'll do with our toes tucked under. But this is one of the options that you have. So we're just gonna finish this for another 30 seconds here. So a lot of the yin meridians start in the feet and this compresses those meridians by doing this. So you're getting all the meridian lines here. It's been wonderful taking this new yin course and learning so much. Many more options to bring you in the times to come. And then go ahead and release that. And from there, you're just going to take your heels and bring one heel in front of the other foot. And this time you're going to pull those feet back. So you're going to really open the front of the foot. So pressing into the sole of your foot and draw those toes back. So now we're putting tension on the front of the foot into the toes as well again, getting all those meridian lines that run through the feet. So again, this will be your option if in the next round, the other two are not accessible and they feel too painful, these will be your options. So you should feel the stress along the front of the foot, maybe even into the arch of the foot. I like this part version like here in case my arch starts to cramp, I can actually massage it with my thumb. About 30 more seconds here. It's recommended that you do each of these for three minutes, alternating them, so six minute total. It's nice to alternate them because I don't think I could do one for six minutes ever or three minutes. And then go ahead and release that. So we're going to transition to try the one from on our toes to see how that feels. So your knees will be down, your toes will be tucked, and then you're gonna sit back on your heels. So it might be this is as far as you get with your hands forward. Over time, as your feet used to it, sit up on your heels and just enjoy. really enjoyed the feeling of this pose after it was done. Like I could feel different sensations in my feet that I had it before. So I'm hoping you enjoy it as well. And again, there's gonna to start to be discomfort as long as there's gonna start stabbing pain in your feet. Try to sit with it, breathe with it. And then leaning forward, take those toes, flatten the toes and sit on the heels. So your feet are flat. And then you have options. If this is feeling okay for you, stay here. If you can, maybe take a blanket or a bolster and slide it underneath your knees so you're leaning back a little bit more. Maybe even press into the floor and lift those knees up. That is where we're headed next. 
So we have options. So this is going to get into the front of the feet again, depending on how it feels. Remember, take yourself just to the edge of that discomfort to where it becomes not painful and hold. So again, sometimes it gets too um, cumbersome to lean back. That's where you can always rest your knees up on something so they're still up, but you don't have to really worry about balance if you need to. more press here. And then transitioning forward, tuck those toes again. So to feel a nice relief in the front and then sit back on those heels. You can feel all that sensation, that targeting, that release in the front of the foot. Well, the back of the foot is now opening and being stretched. The toes are being compressed. And since our feet don't really have a lot of muscles in it, and it is all that, that softer tissue, the ligaments, the tendons, the fascia, a lot of that stuff as we get older and we do a lot of practices like running, cycling, those hard pounding heat, um, bearing activities that make our feet sweat, all of those tissues become a little less lubricated and this helps lubricate the feet. So it's good to do these, you know, a couple times a week, if not daily. And lean forward, last time here, come down onto the tops of your feet and then lean it back in a little bit. So the idea of yin is to lubricate those ligaments, tendons, the fascia, those softer connective tissues that run throughout the body that don't really have a lot of lubrication that happen over time, they get dried out. So the yin practice is a nice balance to those hotter practices, those activities that heat up the body. Couple more cycles of breath here. And then roll it forward, shift those hips to one side and extend those legs out in front of you. And just pause there, just kind of notice those sensations happening in the lower legs. Maybe start to make some circles with your ankles. Enjoying that release. And from here, we're going to return back to a nice little forward fold caterpillar. So legs will be Maybe hip distance, maybe a little bit wider, depending on how you're feeling. Bend the knees ever so slightly, and sometimes you can even place a blanket right underneath the knees. I know I like to do that so that I kind of get into the back body where I want to go. And then maybe you have a bolster or a block forward in front of you so you can eventually rest your head on something. But just start to round forward. Let those legs kind of hang out. We start to round forward, so it's not necessarily a hamstring stretch. We're kind of targeting the hips, the low back, the spine, maybe even the shoulders, depending on how they feel. Arms can be forward or backward, whatever is going to feel best to you. Just allowing yourself to round forward, finding that edge. You want to target those hips, maybe the backs of the knees, maybe you're feeling it in the ankles, but it's not really a hamstring stretch. So let yourself start to settle in here. Again, we'll be here for about five minutes. Finding your first edge and allow yourself to settle in there. 
just depending on how your neck feels, you can let your neck dangle, if that's gonna feel good on that stress on the back of the neck. Or if you need more support with something under your forehead. And start to tune into your breath as you settle into stillness. about halfway there. You might even still be feeling those effects in the feet from the previous poses we did. Inhale here and side out. Very slowly bring yourself back up, taking your time, noticing sensations as you move. start to take any movements you feel you need to to counter that. Maybe lean back into the hands. Maybe find some windshield wiper legs. And then 
then from here, we're going to move into half dragonfly. Again, you might want a block or a pillow or something in front for yourself in a moment. You're going to take your right leg, bring it out to the side. So like as if you'd make your legs wide and then this leg will be in nice and close. You have the option if it feels okay in your knees, there is a deeper option. It's hard to stay in and it might not feel so uncomfortable with this leg tucked back. But again, it's gonna get into that ankle. So you can just kind of decide what you're gonna do. We are gonna fold forward. So this kind of helps you fold forward a little bit more. So you do have that as an option to go with that. So from here, just start to lengthen forward. Just kind of settle in, let the legs relax, let yourself go forward. So again, we're targeting the left knee, ankle, hip. We're targeting the back of the leg, the hip on that extended leg, and then into the low back. And you might stay forward on your forearms if it feels okay. Maybe your chest rests on a bolster, maybe your head on a block. Just settling in here, getting out any little wiggles you need to so you can rest comfortably here. Finding your edge. Just kind of scan over where you might be holding on to that muscle energy. This is a very familiar yoga pose you do in other classes and vinyasa classes. So you might want to, your body has that tendency to start to grip to feel that hamstring stretch. So see if you can let that go. Use that breath to help you settle in a little bit deeper into that stillness. Taking a full inhale here. And let it go. Slowly bring yourself all the way back up. We're gonna take a little side stretch here for the last minute. So start to just kind of lengthen yourself out toward that extended leg. And again, you might wanna put your arm on a pillow, maybe your head rests on your hand or on a block. Just start to lengthen over to the side. And then you have options with that left hand. It can come behind you for a little shoulder stretch. It can come over your top head, or your top head, your top ear. You only have one head. But that elbow kind of relaxed over the head. So you get a deep side stretch. You have a couple options of where you want to go.
And taking an inhale here. And let it go. Slowly release the arm. And then slowly press yourself back up. Taking those legs out to center, taking that left leg out, sliding the right leg in. Maybe just pedal out the feet, bounce the legs a little bit, rock them from side to side. And then we'll transition to the other side, taking that right leg in, taking that left leg out to the side. Just start to roll yourself forward again. You have that option to bend that knee back if that feels better for you on this side or if you did on the other side. And then just start to lengthen forward. Again, taking your time. Remember this side's nice and fresh. So nice and easy. Allow yourself to lengthen out, to get out any little wiggles this first minute so that you can settle into stillness for the other minutes. You're going to feel a nice little inner thigh stretch, that adductor muscle and those ligaments that attach, that fascia that attaches there. That's a nice little stretch into the knee sometimes. Again, just directing your awareness to those areas that you feel tight or tense, where you feel compression. And see if you can allow that to start to relax and let go as you breathe and hold into stillness. Taking a full inhale here. And let it go. Slowly start to transition yourself back up. And then start to lengthen yourself out over toward that left leg. And again, you have the options for your arm. It can come back behind you. It can come overhead. Whatever's going to feel best to you here.
Take a full inhale here. And let it go. Slowly start to take that top arm away. And then slowly press yourself up. And again, sliding that left leg in, taking the right leg out, maybe bouncing those legs a little bit, maybe rocking them from side to side. So next one we're gonna come into is supported bridge. So this is where I like to put a block and then something over the block because of, I want my hips to be comfortable here. I don't want that block cutting into me. So I'm gonna come down onto my back. I'm gonna have that nearby so I can slide it underneath me. I'm gonna lay down. And then from here, I'm gonna lift my hips, slide those props underneath my hips, get myself situated on those hip blocks. And you might wanna just stay here with this pose, so it all depends on how you're feeling. You might wanna stay here, open the chest, and just maybe those arms come like cactus arms. Again, we'll be here for about five minutes. Or if it's feeling okay in the low back and you want to target the low back a little bit more, you're going to start to straighten those legs out. Maybe even take them a little bit wider than normal. And you might need to slide the block down a little bit more into your glutes than normal. Rather than into your low back. So slide it down more toward your sit bones. And if you feel like you want even a little bit more openness in the body, maybe those arms come back overhead. And you have your fingers touch. So your arms are just overhead. So you're really opening up the front of the body. But just be mindful it's not too much compression in the low back. And just start to settle in for time. Directing that breath into those areas that are tight, that are feeling compressed. This is going to be a nice, good full body release after all that compression we've done, all that forward folding. It's going to help open up the front of the body while we compress the back of the body. So tapping into those different energy channels, those different meridians that are now running through the back of the body, letting the ones on the front of the body open up, hopefully restoring that energy flow through them. Thank you. 
And take a full inhale here. And let it go. Slowly bring those arms back down by the side. Sliding those feet back in so the knees are bent. Just pause there for a moment on the block. And notice the effects on the front of the body there. And gently and slowly lift the hips, slide any of those props out from underneath. And let your hips come down to the floor. And again, just pause there for a moment. Just notice the sensations in the back body. If you feel like you need a little relief in the low back, you can always widen your feet and let those knees drop in, find a little internal rotation of the legs to allow a little bit more widening across the low back. And from here, take any motions that you need to let that pose go. And then from here, we'll come into a twist. So kind of thinking about what kind of twist you want. Do you want to target more of the low back and spine? Then you'll just do one leg going over to the side or even two legs. If you want to target your outer hip, you'll do that twisted root. So kind of like the eagle legs. So taking your hips, shift them a little bit to the right. And if you're doing eagle legs with that twisted root, take that right leg over the left and then start to let those knees drop to the left. And then get to a point where maybe you might even need a little pillow under your knees. So you can be in that spot and then opening up the arms. We'll be in this pose for each side for about four minutes. And see if you can let go of that muscle energy. And sometimes it's hard with your inner thighs squeezing together if you're doing the twisted root. So I like to squeeze my muscles just to say, oh yeah, that's engaged. And then I relax them and just let them go. If you find your right shoulder, your opposite shoulder there is a little bit too high, you can always slide a blanket or a bolster under that to allow your upper body to relax. And then again, just settle into that stillness. Acknowledging those sensations that are happening in the body.
Take a full inhale here. And let it go. Slowly start to bring those legs back up to center. Bring the hips back to center. Pause there just for a moment. Let that sensation settle into the body. Let that release of the pose settle in. Notice the sensations in the spine. And then shifting those hips over to the left. Taking whatever pose you did, if you're doing the twisted root, left leg goes over the right. And start to drop those legs to the right. Again, using anything you need to to support yourself to find your edge. Get out any little wiggles that you need to use the props that are needed for this side and start to settle into stillness keeping that awareness on the body those areas those sensations that are feeling compressed are feeling tight and using that directed awareness of your breath see if you can guide that breath there to let those areas release a little bit more and find a little openness a little less discomfort
taking a full inhale here. And let it go. Slowly start to bring those legs back up to center. And bring those hips back to center. Pausing there for a moment, noticing the effects of that side on the left side. On the inner and outer hip. And take any motions that are going to feel good to let go of that pose. And then maybe lengthen out just into a little mini Shavasana here. Just open up the legs, open up the arms. Feel the length in the front side of the body. Feel the back side of the body grow heavy. And see if you can just be still here for a few moments, noticing those sensations in the body. Taking a full inhale here. And let it go. Slowly start to bend those knees. Take the feet as wide as your mat. And start to windshield wipe for those legs from side to side. And then when you start to bring those knees to one side that feels comfortable, roll all the way over to that side. Use your arm as a pillow. Just kind of pause there for a moment. No rush. Just scanning over, seeing what that practice brought. And then press in with that top hand, extend the top leg, press yourself up mindfully. Just come to seated for a moment. Pause there, maybe close your eyes, let your hands rest on your thighs. Check in with the physical body, the mental body, the emotional body. Take a full inhale there. And let it go. Let those eyes blink open. And from here comes the fun part. All those props. We feel very supported. So our first one's going to be um, supported Baddha Konasana. So you're going to need a couple bolsters, something you can kind of have at an angle. So you can put your blocks behind there. I like to use my blocks for my legs. So I'm going to use my bolsters behind me. I'm going to use both of them there. Just have a little bit of an angle. 
And then to feel really supported, you might wanna take your strap and place it around your hips. So it goes right there, kind of at the low back. Although nice and slow for you. So it's gonna come around your waist and then your feet are gonna come into Baddha Konasana and it's gonna come around the, the edges of your feet that are far away from you. And then you're gonna tighten it to where you feel your hips or your low back kind of supported. So it's coming across like the tops where that hip bone is, right at the top, it's coming across there. Not into the fleshy part of your low back, but right there around the, hip, the bone. So it's not into the flesh. So you don't wanna cut into your flesh, that's not comfortable. But it's just gonna give you a little bit more support. And then it's always good to have maybe a pillow or two beside you for a little prop. Maybe have those blocks handy for your hips or your legs on each side. I like to sit on something. So I'm probably gonna take my blanket and I'm gonna sit on that near the bolster so that my hips feel supported. And then sometimes like the floor or whatever you're on doesn't feel so good on your ankles. And this nice trick that I learned is you can take a blanket, a towel, um, a pillow or whatever, you just kind of make a little roll with it and you kind of curve it around, go over the tops of your feet and then kind of go around your ankle bone. And then that just kind of gives you that little support, which is so nice. So if you don't have that, maybe you just rest it on a pillow. That's an option. Um, and then I usually like to cover my body. So I'm gonna have a nice blanket to cover my body because that feels good. And then having something to cover your eyes is also good. I don't have anything right now. Forgot the one thing I forgot. <laughs> Um, but then you're just going to lay back and you may have to adjust the strap, right? So having that strap, if it's too tight, you may have to adjust it as you start to lean back and then just making sure you're supported, especially in the low back. So the difference between yin and restorative is restorative. You want to feel the sensations equally in your body. So you want to feel Everything is supported so much that you don't feel anything beside you. Everything is so supported that you feel like you're laying on a cloud. So that's kind of the sensation you want to create as you're starting to settle in. Having that blanket over the top of you feels really good. And because it takes so long to get here, we're going to stay here a little bit longer. We're going to stay here for about seven or eight minutes. Just getting ourselves all nice and snuggled in. And again, if you do have something to cover your eyes, I highly recommend it. But if you have to get out of what you're in right now, don't worry about it. And then once you're there, making sure you're nice and supported that everything has that equal weight of support throughout the body, settle in. Let's take a big old deep inhale and sigh it out. Just let yourself go, let yourself feel supported. You can just notice the breath, the rise and fall of your belly.
Take a full inhale here. And let it go. Slowly start to bring those arms back by your side, taking them off any props. Letting yourself start to press into those hands, draw your chin to your chest, start to Press yourself all the way up. Remove any props out of the way. Unbinding your legs. And then take those legs out straight. Just pause there for a moment. And notice those sensations. And then from here, we're going to go into a super supported five-star Shavasana. If you 
fall asleep, don't worry. I'll just let it end and you can go to sleep. <laughs> so what I like to do is, um, as you notice, when you're in Shavasana, you have different parts of your body that are not supported by the floor, right? So like under your ankles, under your knees, under your low back, under your neck. So you want to try to support all of those with either blankets, towels, pillows, whatever's going to feel best to you. So I usually have um, a towel or a blanket that I roll up to put underneath my ankles. So we do that first. I usually fold it a couple times and then roll it up. So that's going to go under my ankles. And then I usually have my nice blanket that I usually have for under my knees. And you can place the big bolsters off to the side again. And I usually have some type of pillow back by my head just so I can kind of support my neck. And then a blanket is handy to cover you up. And again, something to put over your eyes would actually add to that little five star. So I'm gonna grab my eye pillow. And if you ever have two eye pillows, something that's great to do if they're both the same is to take one eye pillow in each hand and kind of just let your hands be supported. It just kind of Let's those hands relax a little bit, which is nice. So, once you are there, you disappeared. <laughs> oh, wait. Once you're there, start to roll yourself back, finding all those little gaps supported. Especially under the neck is a, a wonderful place to really feel that support. And then having something over the chest really is beneficial to helping you know, really drop you into that deep state of relaxation. So covering at least from your hips up to your collarbone, the whole body's best if you can, but just finding a little bit of weight there. Maybe even taking an extra pillow and placing that across your belly, your hips, to feel that support there. And then again, covering the eyes. Again, like I said, if you have like extra weight, weighted eye pillows or something, you can always put those in your hands. That sometimes feels good. Just to let those hands really relax down. Once you're settled in, take a nice full inhale. And let it go. This is definitely one pose that you could do each day. Just really nourish the body, help you restore. Just kind of let yourself truly drop into a deep state of relaxation. If you find the mind wanders to any little to-do lists or any stories happening in the head, 
Just send those away with a little loving kindness. Just bring yourself back to the tip of your nose. That sensation of air entering and leaving the nose. As you start to surrender into relaxation. We'll bring us out of Shavasana with three belts. Take rest. Thank you. 
this is feeling good. Please feel free to stay here as long as you want. Otherwise, if you're ready to end, start to deepen your breath. Start to bring some movement into the fingers and toes and the wrists and ankles. Start to reach the arms back behind the head, slide the feet together, give yourself a long stretch. And then slowly bend the knees. Either do windshield wipers with the legs. We start to hug those knees into the chest. Whatever's gonna feel best to you here. And then as you're ready, start to roll yourself over to one side. Use that arm as a pillow, pause there. Check in physically, mentally. Just acknowledge the shifts here. And then as you're ready, mindfully pressing yourself up. Coming all the way back up to seated. Your eyes have opened along the way, allow them to close. Just allow your hands to rest on your thighs for a moment. Bring yourself into the room, onto your mat, and into your body. Allowing your hands to come together in front of your heart. To end this practice today, we'll offer up a little offering from a closing that I get from my mindfulness meditation teacher. I'll just say this for you and you can kind of repeat it in your head. May all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all beings never be parted from freedom's true joy. May all beings dwell in equanimity, free from attachment and aversion. End our practice with an ohm or a sigh of the breath. Exhale fully. Nice full inhale here. Ooh. to curl up into a smile as you open those eyes. Have an awesome day. Drink lots of water. Each veggie is worth some sunblock. Namaste.